the last week for lectures. Uh, so I would like to see it. So this is the, the uh, last week of our lectures, and I will cover chapter 8 um, on additional topics. So I will go as far as we can. Right. But, so the first section is about the spectral uh, theorems. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, in our last um, assign, uh, exercise assignment that uh, I uh, give an additional exercise and uh, essentially put uh, an item that require uh, for you to know the different theorem, but you can forget it. Right, so I will cover that. Okay, alright, so let's read uh, the uh, vector space over F, okay, F can be the set of all the numbers or the set of all complex numbers. Factor V uh, is a vector space. Now, a linear transformation F from V to F, okay, is called a linear function. Right? Um, v. Okay? So a linear function of V uh, is a linear transformation from the vector space V to its scalar field. Right. So let's take an example. Oh, let's take all that to zero. Then this is a zero, <laughs> not a zero function. Right? This, this thing. This is the first uh -huh. right. So given complex number alpha one out to alpha n. Uh, we make f from C and to C, right? Such that for each complex common vector, right? We map uh, this common vector to alpha i and alpha. Okay, so, so we use uh, these complex numbers, right? As uh, scalars for scale of, to multiply with the uh, uh, components of the common vector X. Right? And it is easy to check. That uh, F is linear. Okay. So that F is a linear function. It's a linear function of on C N. Okay. So it's um, a very simple way to construct linear function uh, on the n-dimensional complex Euclidean space C N. Okay, 
Now, we like to be done. Be the set of all linear functions. Okay, the so all linear functions on V. Right? So we collect all linear functionals from V and together and perform the set with them. Now for any F and G in with them. And uh, Alpha theta in the scale field L. Uh, we know that uh, alpha F plus beta G is also a linear function. Uh, maybe I, I can prove that eventually. So we have alpha x plus beta g. We operate on x. And, uh, Apply to a linear combination of two vectors, we have for all here A, B, and F. Okay, so we have alpha F A X and Y. And uh, by the linearity of the linear function of f and g, so we have This implies that alpha f and beta g is also in this side. Okay. So this shows that this side is also a vector space. over x. Okay? So the set of all linear functionals on P is also a vector space over f. Okay? And uh, it's called the dual space. Okay, so it, this is called the dual space 
Any questions? Now we assume that uh, the dimension of the original vector space B is n. So the so vector space B is finite dimensional. And then we let B be u1, u2, un be a basis for V. basis vector ui from i from 1 to n. Okay? So if we know the mapping of the linear function f on the basis vectors ui, then we can determine the linear function f itself uniquely from here. So now in particular, Um, we will define to define a linear function for fj from v to f as following. Um, okay. So fj ui, as we just shown, every linear function can be uniquely determined if we know its mapping on basis vectors ui. So we define the fj, particular, particular linear function, to be delta. Ij 
So that is 1 if i equal to j and is 0 if i not equal to j. Okay? So the value will be 0 and 1. Okay. So for fj, that uh, if ui i not equal to j, that is the f j u i is zero, but f j u j is one. Okay. So this definition uniquely determines a linear function. Okay. All right. So we can define. And such linear function because j can be from 1 to n. Right? So we have n such linear function. So it can be seen And then know that what is fj? Uh, for every vector in represented as a unique linear combination of the basis vectors by the one of the one. Fjx. So Fjx is summation i from 1 to n xi ui. Okay. By linearity of linear functional, so we have uh, fi, fj, ui. Okay. And this is summation i from 1 to n, xi. And uh, by this definition, fj, ui is delta ij. Okay. So this is equal to xj. So what is uh, fjx? What is fjx? So you can say fjx gives us, so we apply fj functional on x gives us the j coordinate. Right? The this coordinate because x1 uh, is the first coordinate relative to u1 and x n is the nth coordinate so that this gives us the j coordinate so that's fj is just the j coordinate the j coordinate Function also said it with the basis for this. Okay? Right, so let's review again. And um, we have assumed vector space V is finite dimension, so the dimension 
is given as n, and uh, we find a basis in first for b. Okay, so okay, all right, and uh, and we know for any linear function now on b, uh, we find that it can be uniquely determined by given its value on the basis vector u1. Okay, so, so that uh, if we give uh, arbitrary values for f of u1 for each i from 1 to n, then we will specify, specify a unique linear function. Alright? So in particular, we define spatial linear function in this way, called Sj. Okay. Right? And, uh, and we find that this uh, spatial linear function are exactly coordinate functions associated with the basis. Now, this n spatial function uh, is for now. So now, for any f in the dual space, this time, okay, f of x. So if you operate on a vector. And for all x in V, f of x, f dimension i from 1 to n, xi, ui. Okay? And so, so this is dimension i from 1 to n, xi, f ui. Okay? And so, i from 1 to n, f u i, and again, what is x i? x i is uh, f x i x. Because the f i x gives us the i's coordinate. So that u x, x a y is equal to f i x. Okay? Maybe I put for all x okay. Maybe I put here. It's more clear. Okay, so this is clear. this is true for every x. So this says that f is equal to A linear combination so, Ui, Fi. So it's a linear combination. in the pure space can be expressed as a linear function uh, as a linear combination of the unspatial linear function and the coefficients the coefficients actually is just the value of x at the basis vectors okay remember that they are they are yeah. All right, so every linear function in a dual space uh, is a linear combination of this n spatial linear function. So this shows that the, the dual space is the span of 
will grow up to the end. Okay? So, we have con so the end spatial linear function we just constructed uh, can span the, the dual space. This is the first observation. And then the next thing is, we want to show that this space is linearly independent. So we consider, we consider a linear relation. Um, on the set with one, up to up to again. Alpha one f one plus alpha two f two plus that is that plus of n and n equal to zero. Okay? You have to know that this is the zero linear function. So it's a linear function. Right? The zero function. Okay? Um, so, so zero is a function, okay, which you make for every vector in, in B into zero, scalar zero. And now, so, so this is, this is even only alpha one f one plus alpha two f two plus alpha n f n. When we operate on the basis vector, give us which is zero, okay? Right? But this is even only that. Uh, Just one direction. So this is implies that alpha one f one u i plus alpha two f two u i plus theta theta plus alpha n f n u i equal to zero. But as we know that. Uh, when j equal to i, we have 1. But when j not equal to i, this is 0. Okay, so that implies that alpha i, f i, u i is 0. Okay? Because for, for other j um, not equal to i, this is 0. So this is implies that alpha i is equal to zero. Okay? So starting from the linear relation on the set of linear function, we find the coefficients must all be zeros. So F1, F2, up to Fn is a linearly independent shape in the dual space. Okay, so now the dual space span by a linearly independent shape. So that means that so that uh, this star Defined to be F1 is a basis for this time. Okay? So we call it as this time. Because that, uh, this linear function uh, is defined in terms of the basis vector via UI in basis B. Okay? 
That is the basis. And uh, it's called the, the dual basis of the basis B in one in two. Okay. <coughs> So now the conclusion is a theorem 8.1.8 A. If a vector space V over M has dimension N then it's your space this star has dimension and two. Okay. Any questions? You just remember that the dual basis consists of all coordinate functions. Okay? All coordinate functions relative to the basis B. Now, this is for arbitrary basis space. But we are considering inner product space. So, what do we have if we consider that dimension inner product space? So now, assume V, D, and that dimension inner product space. So we have inner plot. Now for each for each V V so now that we fix fix a vector V in the inner plot space. Right? We define F3 because it's given by it's from the inner bar space goes to the scalar field <coughs> by x goes to equal to the inner product of x is v. So we use inner product to find a function from v to a. Okay? Now, by the linearity of inner product, for the first argument we know that uh, for any inner product it's linear for the first argument 
Thanks, yeah. So by the analogy for the first argument, F V is a linear function. Okay. So that uh, every so given the fix of vector v, we can construct a linear function uh, by using inner product. So that is easy, right? By using inner product. Any questions? Okay. The next theorem shows that so this theorem is very important shows that the letter B B and N dimensional in the product space In the still space of V, there exists a unique vector V in the vector space such that f of x is equal to the inner product of x with V for all. So the theorem says that any linear function, any linear function can be constructed in this way. Alright? And uh, and also say vector V is unique. Alright, so for each linear function in the field space, there exists a unique vector V such that this linear function is just an inner product of x with this big vector Okay? So any questions about the statement of theorem 8.1.b? Fine. So if not, then I will proceed to prove. Now, let B U1, U2 um, U1 okay. B and also normal basis So we have, proved, we have proved that by Grand Shimmy's procedure, um, we know that uh, every finite dimensional inner product space has an orthonormal basis. Okay, so so we just pick up an orthonormal basis B uh, for the finite dimension for the n-dimensional inner product space B.
Okay, so we have uh, linear function, and here we have a linear function, right? Now consider a linear relation on the set f u one, f u two, up to f u n. Right? So we consider it. We are we want to prove that uh, if we have n such linear function, we want to prove that uh, uh, this n such linear function form a linearly independent state. Right? So we consider a linear relation. Okay. So alpha 1, f u1 plus alpha 2, f u2 plus theta plus alpha n, f u n equal to the zero function. Okay? So once again, this zero means the zero linear function of V. Okay? So it is zero linear function of V. Alright, so now this implies that uh, if When we apply the left-hand side on ui this is zero, okay, this is zero. So this says that we have alpha one f u1 ui plus alpha 2 f u2 ui plus theta plus alpha n f u n ui equal to 0 implies that <coughs> alpha 1 ui u1 plus alpha 2 u i u two plus alpha n u i u n equal to zero. Okay. By definition, because that we define f u i as in the product. And because that uh, the u1, the ui's are also normal to each other, right? so that uh, if uh, if the index j is not equal to i, the inner product is zero. Otherwise, it becomes one. So this is, it comes alpha i ui ui equal to zero. And so this is alpha i equal to zero. So the conclusion is that f u one, f u two, up to f u n, right? Is a linearly independent state in this time. Now. Because V star is n-dimensional, and we find a maximal linear equivalence because it consists of n functionals. So, from a theorem uh, in chapter five, so that. that um u n u two up to u n is a basis <coughs> so it's a basis for this time. Okay. Okay? 
But now, for each f in the wave star, okay, there exists you need alpha one, alpha two, alpha two. Okay, you need uh, x one. X2 up to X10 in F such that F equal to X1 FU1 plus X2 FU2 at the top plus Xn FU1. Okay? Because this is a basis for this time. So for, for each linear function, what? in the pure space, um, we have a unique linear combination. Okay? So we have unique scalars, x1, x2, up to xn, such that f can be expressed as a linear combination of f1, u f1, u2, up to f1. Okay? So that we have uh, f of x. Oh, uh, I think uh, because I will use extra the scalars, I choose beta one and two and two beta. I'm sorry. <coughs> I use beta instead of x. Thus, we have for all x in v, okay, so this is equal to beta 1 fu1 plus beta 2 fu2 plus, plus beta n fu n on x. So this is beta 1 f u1 x plus beta 2 f u2 x plus beta n f u1 x okay. Now, from the definition of f u i so this is inner product with u1 plus beta 2 x u2 plus Beta n, f, u, n, uh, x, u, n. Okay? And, uh, well, I, um, I would like to put a bar there, the compass can be Okay? It's just for my purpose. Okay? As a matter, just unique beta 1 bar, beta 2 bar, etc. Right? Okay, and now, so, by the conjugate linearity for the second argument of linear in product, we have, so this is, is beta 1 u1. Beta two 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 plus beta n two n. So finally, we have x summation i from one to n beta i u i. Okay, so you see the linear function f is just an inner product of f with some specific vector. Okay. So this is x and v. This we define to be the linear combination of beta i u i.
So you see that every every linear function uh, we can find unique v, yeah. such that uh, it's just the inner product with some unique v. V is unique because beta beta bar they are unique. Okay. With unique beta one bar beta two bar, we have unique beta i. Any questions? Okay, so let's take a break up to 11 o'clock. a linear operator D on an n-dimensional inner product space. is actually on V is actually a linear transformation from V to V. Okay. V. Now now we fix now we fix Theorem. We just prove a point one 
point B there exists a unique vector Z in the inner space such that such that T X Y this is beta one x right is equal to x and the z because every linear function has a unique vector z such that uh, uh, it is just the inner product of x with z. So this is from here, a point one point two. This is from definition. By our definition. Okay? We define the theta y by composition. Okay, so, and you can see that it is clear that uh, this Z vector depends on Y and uh, is uniquely determined by one. Okay? So Z depends on Y. So as Y changed, we have a different linear function. So we will have different Z. So Z depends on Y. And from this theorem, we know that uh, Z can be determined uniquely by Y. Okay? So for each why we have a Z, right? And Z is uniquely determined. No ambiguity. So this says that we can construct. So we let Z to be T bigger Y. Right? The T bigger. And uh, thus we establish Uh, maybe P take from V to V, right? Such that uh, for Y we get a Z. Right? That's the bar. Such that we have the functional identity that Px Y equal to x t bigger y for all x y and z okay so that is very interesting thing happened that um, for every linear operator t for every for every linear operator t there exists an associated linear operator T bigger. And this T bigger, this T bigger has this functional relation that when we apply T on X here and take inner power with Y, it's equal to X and the inner power with T bigger on Y. So now this T taper is called the, uh, the joint of T. So every linear operator has an, a unique uh, joint, T taper. 
Okay? Let's keep So now, we will prove the lemma 8.1.8. Actually, this is related to theorem 8.1.1 in the textbook. Okay. The other joint, the figure of a linear operator. on an and dimensional in the product space V is also a linear operator. So we want to show that uh, this matrix is linear. Okay. Right. So proof. We get y one, y two, b two vector in B and uh, alpha one, alpha two in the scalar. Over M, yeah. we put the over M to the space bar. It's a scale of field. The so M can be R or C. Okay, the over M. So later on, we have two vectors. So now X P taker alpha one by one plus alpha two by two. Okay. So we'll see the action, right? So T dagger on the linear combination of Y1 and Y2. All right, and by the functional relationship here. Yeah. This is Tx, alpha 1, Y1 plus alpha 2, Y2, okay? Now, by conjugate linearity for the second argument, for in the in the product we have alpha and alpha dx by one plus alpha two bar dx by two. And then again, by using the functional relationship again, so we have alpha 1 bar x t taker by 1 plus alpha 2 bar x t taker by 2. Okay. Now apply again the conjugate linearity for the second argument. So in the product, we have alpha 1, t dagger, and 1, plus x, alpha 2, t dagger, and 2. Yeah. And so we have x, alpha 1, t dagger, and 1, plus alpha 2, t dagger, and 2. Okay, so for every x, we have this one, for f, we have that one. So this is true for all x in the grid. So the conclusion is that uh, t taker alpha 1 and 1 plus alpha 2 by 2 is equal to alpha 1 t taker by 1 plus alpha 2 t taker. 
So T dagger is mean. And then we'll back. Okay, so T dagger is a linear operator. As we just proved. Now, it seems T dagger is so abstract, right? So let's take an example to show you that the T dagger is not so strange. Example, so consider a linear operator T on Cn with Cx is Ax. Where A is an n times n complex matrix. Alright, so we consider a very common linear operator constructed by a square matrix. So uh, this is a very common linear operator. Right? The x A X. Now, so what? So the what is T dagger? Okay. So we want to know what is T dagger this time. How do we construct T dagger? Okay. So so let's see. T x and the one. Right. Yeah. Now, this is the standard because we are in the n-dimensional complex Euclidean space. The, the inner product we use is, is the standard inner product. So what is that? This is y emission dx. Okay? Remember, y emission means the, 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 the conjugate transpose, right? The conjugate transpose of y. Okay, and this is y h a x. Okay? So this is a scalar. This is a scalar. And then this one is equal to a x, take the dimension and the y. The same. Okay? Say a h y. All right, and so so this is x emission a emission y. Okay, and so this is x h and uh, oh. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. And I think, uh, oh, I'm sorry. So Y, H, A, X, sorry, I'm sorry for that. So now we, we with association here. Hermitian operator, when you apply twice, you get the original one. Okay? And so that is, and by applying the Hermitian, you have A H Y Hermitian X. Yeah. Okay? So when you apply Hermitian there, you will exchange to the order, right? And take the A H, and Y H H is 1. Okay, and why is that? 
So this is x, a h, y. So we start from t x and y. And this y must be equal to x and the t j curve y. Okay? So for all x, y, and v. Right? So, so that t j curve y is equal to a h y. Okay, so t dagger is actually associated with a complex matrix, which is just the permission of A. Okay, so we start with this one. The linear transformation at tx is AX, then the t dagger is AH1. So this is this is the reason why the Hermitian A H of A is sometimes called the adjoint. Of A. Okay. Right. So, so that uh, the Hermitian of A sometimes is called a joint of A because of this relationship. Because A can define a linear operator on C n, and that the joint of this linear operator T is just T dagger just A H Y. Okay. Alright, so I stop here.